Welcome back to Streets and Eats. This is episode 50, and we're going to be talking about how we became digital nomads. Welcome to Streets and Eats, the travel and food podcast dedicated to taking our listeners to the sights, sounds, and flavors of fascinating places near and far, both on and off the beaten path. We're Jim and Corinne Vale, and we've been traveling internationally and domestically together for decades, visiting more than 90 countries in all 50 states in the USA. We'll share all of the local knowledge and food expertise we've gathered through years of living as expats in Asia and Europe, as well as traveling with families spanning multiple generations around the world. Join us each week for a new adventure. I'm sure you've noticed it's been quite some time before we've podcasted. It wasn't really the plan. I'm not sure if we had a plan, um, but that wasn't it. No, it's, I, I think it's been too long, almost two months. Yeah. And we thought, oh I don't know my. what we thought, but <laughs> we thought we could keep up our schedule and do everything we had to do. Um, boy, We've were just we wrong. been so busy <laughs> these last few weeks or sorry, these last several weeks, right? Yeah. These last few months. And it's really and flown it, by and like it, like time does. Yeah. And on the one hand, a lot of our extra busyness came about because of, you know, COVID is not gone. I never would say COVID is gone, but it's apparently manageable enough now to get back to travel and to, and to kind of get back to some sort of norm. Well, we have been traveling and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, we're always talking about that, actually. But we also have been doing some other things, which we've alluded to in the past. Um, but that's going to be what today's episode is about. So yes. just let's just put it this way. We've been stressed. We've been busy. We've been having a lot of fun. And we're happy as can be. So yeah, we've really been going through the emotions lately, yeah. <laughs> through the motions and the emotions. But it, I think it's all worth it so far. It, things are coming out kind of the way we expected them to and wanted them to. Almost everything. So uh, you know, to say we didn't really have a good enough plan as far as the podcasting goes is probably true because we end up with way too big of a gap. Still, this is episode 50 and that's a pretty good milestone. That's right. We are on episode 50 and we're happy about that. So thank you listeners for coming out for 50 episodes. Um, we promise the next 50 won't be so sporadic. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it hasn't been sporadic. It's just been this big gap. A lot of life changes happening. That's right. And that kind of changes the way we do things, but I think we're on it on a, maybe a, even keel now, maybe until the next thing gets thrown at us. Okay. So let's get right into it. Okay. Wow. Where do we start? Uh, that's why I had to pause for a second. <laughs> even though we have like a plan for this podcast, it's still like, Ooh man, so much has been happening. Yeah. It's over the been last crazy. like six months. And a couple of years ago, Jim and I were working in Japan, as you well know, and we were teachers and our daughter came to us and said, we would love to have a baby, but we want you to be part of our baby's life on a continual basis. So will you stop chatting about it and just retire and come take care of our baby for a year? Which we were actually pretty excited about because we were at the point in our, in that career where we wanted to make that transition. And, you know, we talked about kind of being digital nomads for, for a long time. Because and we didn't expect to have grandchildren. So our plan was to retire and hit the road. And just hit the road and not live everywhere for three or four years and move on to a different place, which we were able to do with our work, which was fantastic, but really become more nomadic than we had been. And not be on a, such a strict time schedule. So we said, okay, we... We said, yeah, we want a grandchild. Are you kidding? Yeah, there's no question. So where, where we're at anyway. Um, and then we said we would go and spend a year living with them or living near them. Well, we said living with them. Here's a hint. Living with your children as grownups. No, no. Unless that's something culturally that your family has done. It's yeah. a hard thing to do. It is. So that didn't work. We get, we end up getting our own apartment and then buying a house because we thought we were going to be there a long time. That's right. But that's when the next little wrench was thrown into the fan. Yeah. I, and we have talked about this back in April. Or, uh, no, I think it was earlier than April. Maybe uh, March, even. April. March, April. That time frame of this year. After uh, we just bought a house a few months before. Yeah. Three months after we bought our house and settled in. 
uh, Erica came back and said, you know, I've really been wanting to move overseas for a long time now. And I think the time is right. Oh, we said, are you sure about this? We, not that we weren't happy for her because we know that that had been something she was working towards, but as we prefaced, we just bought a house. Yeah. Like we weren't going to buy a house. I went against all my grain to buy a house. And then of course we found the perfect little house and we bought it and we, we were happy it. in it and we started fixing it up. Um, so we were a little, I'm not going to lie. We were a little bit put out. Yeah. A little but ticked thankfully off. she told us not face to face at first. She told <laughs> us, um, where we had a little bit of time to think about it before we were face to face and we had to recap our lives. That's how we raised our two daughters. They grew up largely overseas. They grew up traveling Europe. They grew up in Asia, in high school, in Japan, all around the world and in Korea and teaching English in Korea and knowing that we value not only travel, but getting to know the cultures that um, are around us, that are part of this world. This is a global economy now. I mean, now more than literally more than ever. And we'll probably chat about that off and on as well. But um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, that's how we raise them. So of course we value that yeah. she would move overseas and her child would be raised in an international school system. And even though it put us out, we really couldn't be mad about it. Because, I mean, that's what we believe, that that is the best education. Travel is the best education, and it was a great way to raise our children. So how could we be mad at her for wanting to raise her child that way as well? So fast forward a couple of months. Yeah. They move in with us into our house because they're selling their house, and they're getting rid of as much stuff as they can get rid of. Although, take it from me, not enough. Not enough. <laughs> but anyway, it's hard. Getting rid of stuff is hard. And then they moved to Vietnam immediately, immediately our hearts were empty. Yeah. It was like a part of our lives was torn out. Well, remember we didn't move to Tacoma, Washington because that's someplace that we necessarily wanted to move. We didn't have any ties there except for our daughter and her family. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a, a few friends in the area. We have good friends in the area, great friends in the area, and we love them. But not, it's not probably the place that we would settle, choose to settle. I don't know where without we would choose some to family there. Yeah. Because really, yeah. Our fam wherever our family is, is where we want to be. And so that's why we were like, okay, well, we're going to follow them. Yeah. And that really spurred us on to, I guess, the next six months, how we even managed to get any podcasts out from April forward. I really don't even know. I don't either. I don't know. I mean, we had a little bit break there because we had naturally finished a season. It, it just goes to show you that becoming a digital nomad was a lot of work. And this is how it happened for us. Yeah. Okay. So starting out, we knew we wanted to get rid of as much of our stuff as we could. I mean, we've traveled around the world and we've collected things that are important to us. For example, for example, one of the heaviest things we own mm. is a marble coffee table, uh, a cast iron coffee table that we bought the slab of marble, had it cut to our specifications. This is in Turkey, by the way, had our ironmonger make a table for us. Several tables. Several tables because we had a whole slab of marble. Um, 11 tables, if I'm not together. Being... Right. Because the slab was what, two meters by know. three meters. Large. And so we had end tables. We had a coffee table. But we these had are round tables. Yeah. That we, you know, we designed, we handcrafted, they're bespoke to our specifications and things that really mean something to us. We went out, we were in Turkey, we bought the marble, we, we found an ironmonger, we, you know, we did it all ourselves. And so there's those memories that it encaptures, but it also, it's just something that you, you can't get it anywhere else. No. So even though it weighs 300 pounds, <laughs> <laughs> quite, I'm not exaggerating. A lot. Um, yeah, we were, we have stuff that we were going to keep. Yeah, we knew and there I was going to be things we would keep. I think everyone 
would maybe love the minimalist idea or maybe the digital nomad idea, but I find it hard to believe that you can get rid of everything. everything. You own. If you've lived a life, maybe if you're young and you're 20 sure. and you, it's you know, you story, can right? leave two boxes of, you know, your childhood stuff at mom's house. That's one thing, but no, remember Jim and I retired. Yeah. We're, we're not spring chickens from living overseas for yeah. 20 years, 25 years. So we had years. a lot of stuff. And then we also kind of had Eric and Michael stuff that ended up in our basement. The stuff that they couldn't get rid of. And we even had some of my other daughter's stuff that we end up having to drive a U-Haul down to California and give her back in her huge house. Um, it was it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. But so far, I'm happy. So mm. the beginning of the process was figuring out what we could get rid of, what we just couldn't part with. And that's a hard, that's a really hard decision to and, make. And how much we were willing and where we were willing to store the stuff. Yes. Because that was going to be a monthly cost that we were going to have to pay for, whether we're gone for six months or six years. And so that's something that we had to fit into our budget and figure out what was going to be the best thing for us. Well, and remember, we kind of went back and forth with what we were going to do with the house. And we'll talk about the house oh, as yeah, well. The but house. it does play into what we were going to do with our stuff. Yeah, that's true. Because at first we thought, well, why not just do like short term rental of the house where we were near a university. Um, there wasn't really a lot of other draw to that area other than it was the university. Really just the university so yeah. It was kind of iffy on whether it would be a viable, like an Airbnb type thing, but we thought that's the direction we would go. And we had in our basement, we had enough space that was secured where we could store things and behind a locked door. Right. So that was one thought that we had. Until we started looking into management companies and yes. how much it was going to cost us to have an Airbnb. And the honest answer is to pay a management company to do it for us is ridiculous. I yeah. mean, we're paying a mortgage still. We well, would still be paying mortgage. That, that it, it just didn't make sense. Well, we'd be paying the mortgage plus the management company mm -hmm. and hoping to recoup that. But realistically thinking that there's no way in heck we were going to be able to recoup no. all of it. Because so we, that couldn't, means we wouldn't have been able to keep it occupied enough. I don't think not without a stronger draw besides the university. I mean, that would work really good for a couple of times throughout the year, but not throughout the entire year. Anyway, our whole being is about as little stress as possible. Stress is not good for anybody. It's unhealthy. I don't like it. And I am a stress monger. So I know that is an oxymoron kind of thing, but it's just the way it is. I, you know, you need to reduce and limit as much stress as you can. Exactly. And so we started thinking about it and that was the direction we were going probably for at least a month. Yeah. And so, and so things was, were going into that basement room. Yeah. For storage. So, we, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. so we were. Yeah, it just wasn't working. And so we decided to switch gears, which Jim and I are pretty good, I think, at evaluating how yeah. things are going and not necessarily afraid to switch gears, i.e. Yes. buying a house and then turning around saying, you know, what, seven months later yep. that we're going to sell it. We need Knowing to sell. full well, the market has pretty much crashed. It hadn't crashed yet. It was it crashing. Was over the peak and heading down. For sure. And yeah, and there's, we figured there was no way we were going to break even. And I'm not sure if we did or we didn't, well, but. I, I think by the time you add in the cost of everything we put into the house and just the more paying the mortgage for that whole time, we sold the house for more than we bought it for, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, we, by the time all the fees were done and the closing costs and everything else was paid. We, we still got, a chunk of change. got more back than what we paid for it. Right. So we did okay, except when you, you know, you do the final tally, of course, we probably, if we came out even, we we're lucky, maybe a little bit lower than even, but pretty but close to we're it. Okay. We, it we came out okay. And you know what we don't have right now? We don't have a mortgage. Yes. Of what was it? $2,200 a month or something. Yeah. Or a rental that we have to worry about. Or a rental with. that we have to worry about keeping occupied in a place. That we don't really plan on returning mm -hmm. to long term. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, we haven't really talked about where we lived. We loved our house. The area we were in hmm, probably wasn't our first love, but you know, you buy where you can. 
And so that kind of also played into the decision of where, whether it would be a good rental or not. At so any rate. We sold. We sold. And we, we get the realtor in and he's sitting there doing his talk with us and he's not really selling us hard. In fact, he's soft selling us because the market is crashing. We know the market's crashing. We know that we need, if we're going to sell it, we need to sell it as soon as possible and we need to have a lot of luck. Um, he was pretty, I would say, I don't know. Like, I didn't get a good feeling that yeah. we were going to sell it from he, the way yeah. he was talking to us. He definitely wasn't excited about the prospects, but he also was like, you know, things sell in every market. Yeah. Uh, and so he helped us price it at a price that would help us break even and hopefully still attract buyers. And ultimately it did. Anyway, so becoming a digital nomad for us, the number one thing we had to do is A, make the decision that um, our grandbabies left. That's the reason we're here. So we're selling the house and moving to where they are. And that place was Vietnam. We've mentioned that before. Right. The second thing was, okay. Stuff. Stuff and the house. We got to get rid of stuff and we got to get rid of this house. And we don't want anything, you know, hanging over our heads. We don't want to be carrying this burden of debt. We don't want to be worrying about... Floods, rain, snows, yeah. the roof caving in, you know, winds, Crime, who knows, whatever. whatever the multitude of things are that you have to worry about with houses. So hallelujah, that we did. And we sold the house and that worked. So then, I mean, on top of that, like Jim said, it COVID is to the point where people are traveling now. Mm -hmm. People are still getting COVID. A lot of people I know have gotten COVID in the last few weeks even. So we're still masking right. up and we're still trying to be careful, but Get at the same boosters. token, we're still traveling because we missed it so much. And that's part of our, that's who we are. Um, but meantime, we're selling a house. We do a trip to Louisiana. We're selling the house. We do a trip to California. We're selling, we're in the middle of doing all this stuff. And luckily we knew we were going to be busy. We knew we had things planned and we had, um, Worked it out with the mortgage company and everything that we could do everything online. So we did not have to be there for the signings. And that worked out really good in it. And that's a great option. Yeah. They sent us plenty of emails, but everything's e-sign. And, you know, it. if you're technologically efficient at all, it was a piece of you cake. You can do it. That's right. Yeah. Um, I would not say it was hard at all. There was a few little things that we had to call and ask questions about, but they were very responsive and things happened very quickly and it was easy. And we actually didn't get the money until we were, I think we were in California, but mm -hmm. it did. All the transfers went through. We saw the big check in our, big, our, our checking account or wherever we sent it. And yeah, it all worked out great. So I think it is a little daunting to think about selling as much of your stuff in your house, but it's well worth it. Yeah. Well, it, it adds a step uh, in the process as well, as far as if you sell too soon, where are you going to live until you head to your destination? Yeah, you still have to live somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of plan it out to where everything would fall into place and somehow... It did. It did. We got lucky and it all fell into place in, according to our timeline that we had imagined it would take place in. So incredibly, it all worked. And um, so, okay, so we started the process. We didn't really start the process until they, the kids were gone because yeah, we just I don't couldn't. think we realized that living in Tacoma without my daughter and her, her son and husband there was, it, it just gave us no, it, we felt empty. It, yeah. We weren't going to be happy there. And it, it took us maybe a week or two, <laughs> two days, three hours. I don't know. It took us a little while to figure that out. And then. That we weren't going to stay. Then we had to bat back and forth, you know, what are we going to do? And finally we said, okay, we're moving. So once we made that decision, I don't think it was probably until I'm going to say the first or second week in August. Yeah. Yes. And that was about the same time. And, and so about mid-August is when we realized, or maybe even September, when we realized that, no, keeping the house was not viable. We had to sell it. Um, so we had to get everything out of the basement, everything completely out of the house. Sell as much stuff sell as, as we could. Sell as much as we could. Boy, that garage sale, we were, we were making some bargains, decide, but we got rid of a lot of stuff. Decide what to save. So what we ended up doing... Uh, and I think that a lot of people are going to have this question. And then we've had this question a couple of times already, you know, what, 
how do you decide what do you keep and what you're going to get rid of? Uh, we knew we were. We did be- not go the you know the it doesn't bring me joy route. No, I mean part of that maybe, but not really. Yeah, we didn't follow anybody else's ideas or philosophies, right? We just looked at you know what we were going to need for storage. We knew we had to keep. Uh, the stuff that Erica and Michael and Aster had left behind um, because they had already made their decisions on what they were keeping. Now, mind you, as I was clearing the stuff out of the basement and putting it into the storage room that we ended up getting and sharing, I'm looking at thinking, are they really going to come back in 10 years and say, oh my God, I'm so glad I kept this whatever. But you know, they'd made that choice and I wasn't going to make it for them, but we were making it for ourselves. And we had accumulated some stuff, even though we've been in pare down mode in the last several moves, there's still a lot. And, uh, we can owning a house. You add things like yes. lawnmowers and stuff that, you yeah, know, so you there's need so that. much to sell Facebook marketplace. Thank you very much to all those people who use marketplace and were looking for deals. You got some great steals from us. Um, but I also didn't want to just donate everything and get rid of it. But we did donate a lot. We did end up donating a lot because, yeah, we had we came down to the time, and if it didn't sell, it went. Um, our storage is ten by twenty, which, which sounds is a big, but it's for two good families. Size room, and and we made that choice thinking, okay, what we would keep would be, of course, those mementos that we've dragged around the world with us forever that we'll never get rid of, and the ones that we've picked up along the way that we know we just are going to want whenever we do settle down somewhere. Uh, you talked about the slab and the coffee table. I was thinking more of the, um, the grinding stone. Oh yeah. That we also picked up in Turkey. Well, we, we, we have weird things. <laughs> Speaking of weight. We have weird things. Glass fishing floats from Japan. I did sell a lot of those and there was a hot had a market lot for it, but we still have quite a few that, you know, someday I'm going to hang them from the patio or put them out in the garden. Or our kids will, because or we'll our be kids t- will. <laughs> or they'll be worth even more money. It doesn't matter. So in that 10 by 20, we put those memento type things, of course, everything that Eric and Michael left behind and uh, a little bit of furniture so that enough furniture and housing supplies so that when we do come back to the States and when we want to get started again and set up an apartment or a little house, we have the basics. We don't yeah. need to go out and rebuy all that stuff. Because we'll still have paying, to buy things because you know you always of do. Of course we will. But I mean, we have our bed, we have a couch, we have our coffee tables, <laughs> we have enough to, to, you know, start. Yeah. And we don't have to outlay tons and tons of money. And so. I don't know that we would have done that if we weren't also storing Things for Erica and Mike. I don't know. It doesn't matter. That's what we decided. Yeah. Um, It might be a little superfluous. It depends on how long we're gone. You know, here's the thing about this digital nomad life. We don't know how long we're going to do this. Everybody keeps asking us. Um, We've moved to Vietnam. Well, how long are you going to be there? A month, two months, six months, six years. years. We we just have no idea. Um, We're going to stay here as long as we can. As long as the visas work. We'll talk about that in our next podcast. And, um, you know, we're going to enjoy travel for as long as our health allows us. And as long as our kids are moving around and doing things. And as that's, long as we're enjoying it. That's that's our life. That's what we want to do. Yeah. And that's what we're willing to do. Um, do we have any other? I mean, I think that's the big things as far as preparing yeah. to be a digital yeah. and nomad. I, and I think that's what oh, most people. No. I mean, we did have to think about like we had to get rid of our desktop computers. You can't carry desktop computers around. So we had to buy another laptop computer. We already had one. Um, we had to think about our photo storage. That's a huge thing for us since we're photographers and vid- videographers. We have so many bites and bites. And Terabytes. I don't know. What's a zillion bytes? We have bytes and bytes. <laughs> well, we have terabytes. Of um multiple terabytes. Yeah. We just have so much, so many files that are important. And those are things that we can't get rid of. And not only can we not get rid of them, we gotta have access we to have them. We have to have access because we use those. We use those for podcasting and webcam. Our and, web and blog. blogging yeah, and vlogging everything. and everything we do. Yeah. So yeah, we have access. Well, I mean, we should talk about that too. 
we talked about getting rid of the house. Of course, we had to sell our car. We had a trailer that we sold. Uh, I An will, RV. I'll be honest, the trailer and the car, we did take a loss on those because, I mean, that's just the nature of things. Yeah. Uh, the only thing we didn't take a loss on as far as that kind of thing goes was um, we had a small, like a pop-up trailer yeah. that we were able to get rid of at the height of the summer when people were just getting back into travel. So we, we did pretty good on that one. But you know, the other things, if you're going through this route, just be prepared. It's going to be a loss. You're going to take a loss on selling vehicles. And we decided there's no reason to keep a vehicle. And we didn't want to store it. We've gone that route before and it just causes huge problems for the vehicle. Uh, Both times we've done it, we've ended up having to put thousands of dollars into the vehicles after the fact. Um, just it's not to, worth it. Yeah, it's just not worth it. And Plus it's the something storage. else you have to worry about. Yeah. And another storage fee so you got to pay. Another stress thing, right? Another stress thing. So, yeah, we got rid of our cars. We got rid of our computers and downsized the laptops. We had to figure out digital storage. We um, had to figure out banking. Actually, since we're travelers already, um, we have a pretty good banking system set up already, and it's worked for us pretty well. We were thinking of trying to get an Asian bank, but that turned out to be no, mm. it wasn't working. So wasn't wasn't really it wasn't going to happen. The time frame we had, maybe um, something we can do in the future. Um, we had to decide what we were bringing with us, and yes, we had to decide what we That's were bringing with us. Um, Eric that- and Michael were already here in Vietnam. So they had told us some things that they wish they had brought. So we brought those. But the reality is we brought probably a suitcase for them of things they needed and toys for the boy because he's our boy. And (laughs) then we bought a huge suitcase of things to help us sort of get set up. We bought a couple of egg pans and um, yeah, things that we already had. Little things. We we didn't didn't go out and buy them. Yeah, yeah, we didn't go out and buy anything new for this move other than uh, a couple of things that they had mentioned that you couldn't get here. And we probably brought a little bit more clothes. We got rid of so many clothes. I can't even tell you like loads and loads and loads of clothes that we donated, but we still probably brought more than we would need if we were just traveling out of suitcases because we're in a house. Like right now I'm in a pair of leggings and a shirt. There's no way these leggings and shirt would have come. If I was putting them in a suitcase, no way. There's just no way. So that's just an example. Uh, in in part two, uh, what it takes to live where we're living at now. Um, And really what you're going to bring with you, what we were going to bring with us was determined by how much the airline would let us carry. And that was two 50 pound bags each. Yeah. So four 50 pound bags. And that's what we brought. In fact, they were a little bit over. Yeah. I won't lie. (laughs) We were very friendly with the check-in counter people and you know we're old we get away with yeah, it we can, we can kind of get away with things One we was, were there early yeah, getting we, there early i think makes first. a huge we like difference first in line that makes because a big difference. they're not tired of people doing that already right like, we were the first of the day so so one we bag nice. was like 53 pounds when it was 55 pounds when it was 58 pounds i think the biggest one was 60 pounds so not like actually it was probably not even 60 it was 59 pounds nothing really crazy over. But when you add it all up, that's quite a bit of extra weight. Yeah. They, they just let us go through without having to pay extra. But anyway, so we had to pare down to our suitcases, but that's it. I mean, other than getting rid of your stuff, getting rid of your house, getting rid of your debts. Well, we didn't really have debts except for our house. I think other people might have more debt, but we have been working on that forever, forever. So it's always been a, it's always been a priority point. for us. Um, um, it, it's not that hard to become a digital nomad. Like I said, we, the initial process, we started, I'm going to say the second week of August, we moved to Vietnam at the end of September. No, at the end of October. At the end of October. So what is that? Three months? Mm-hmm. In three months, we did it all. Yeah. Oh, and I had surgery. Oh yeah, that's during right. During that time. She and was not a whole lot of help as far as the lifting goes. Yeah, I, I was no help because I just had surgery. So and, and remember, we had put all that stuff in the basement, so oh, it yeah. all had to come out of the basement. Yeah. Oh, a couple my. times we paid people because we, did. we just had and, to. And that's a really good option if, when you get to that point. We we when we got the U-Haul, 
uh, to get things moved, I included uh, Getting two help workers that. that would yeah. come in and work for one day. For 300 extra bucks, it was well worth it. So uh, we got everything prepped and in boxes, and then we just had them help move those boxes. And that was huge. That was a huge help. Clearing out the house was was kind of hard. I mean, and we had only lived there for, you know, 10 months or whatever. Um but it was still hard. If you've lived there for 20 years, I can't even imagine how hard it would be because it's just so easy to accumulate a lot of junk. Uh, well, yeah, we should talk a little bit about the files and, and how we are maintaining our storage or, so that we can get a hold of those pictures and those videos and stuff that we're working on. Okay. Uh, because I think that's something that people have a lot of questions about. It definitely is something that we feel a lot of questions on. Well, that was one heartbreaking thing. I had to throw away a lot of portraits that I had framed up in my house oh, because right. what are you going to do with those? Nobody I mean, wants them. We kept a couple, but just so that we could hang them up on the walls if we ever, if we ever do get back a into house. a place. Um, but yeah, all those things that we had collected forever. No, that's a tough, tough choice to tough. get rid of, it's but tough. that's a lot of space that could be better used. So for us, that was that choice. Um, I think we've talked in the past about where we store our files and our digital storage. Uh, we have a Synology disk station that's I had recently upgraded to 25 terabytes. And I think it's got about 15 terabytes so far. Uh, so we still have space on it. That has the option of plugging into a network and opening up some ports and being able to access it directly across the internet. That's something we could do, but that's not really the route we went um, because we also want a backup of it. So a while back, uh, when you could still get it fairly cheap, we went into the option of Google Enterprise where you can get, uh, for the smallest company, I think it's five employees and uh, it's up to $12 an employee now. Um, so for $60 a month, we get email, uh, it was unlimited storage in a Google Drive, uh, but it's not anymore. Now it's, uh, I want to say it's 25 terabytes. So it works out just perfect for us. And so we've got the disk station that's being backed up to the Google Drive and the Google Drive that also now mirrors the disk station. So while we're traveling, the work we do on our on our laptops, we put on the Google Drive and it backs up to that Terra Drive. So we have... We still have access to everything and we still have backups. It's, it's not always the fastest. No. And there is just no fast solution for that, unfortunately. Yeah. So, but so it is something that you have to think about when you're, if you're actually staying in hotels or traveling around the world, you've got to go places where the internet is, is pretty fast. And that should be a priority when you're looking online. However, we haven't had any trouble. No, it's worked good. Of course, as you know, we haven't put out a podcast in two months, but. <laughs> well. Um, but it's we, not because of this access to no. internet, unfortunately, I wish I could say it was. Yeah, but it's been working and I think it's a good solution and it's actually very affordable and it doesn't matter that you don't really quote unquote have a business. Right. It doesn't. So, um, if you've got a website, you connect it to your website. Um, if you don't, you don't, that's okay well, too. Almost everybody has Instagram or whatever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so. and if, if you don't even need that much storage, of course, there's so many ways you can just get, uh, you can pay for Google drive storage on a subscription basis or Amazon storage, or, I mean, there's so many Dropbox. Luckily we're in a, in the technological world now, much more so than when we've traveled before. Mm -hmm. So it, it has made it much, much easier for us Yeah, because we are have in to the digital world. Travel with the big old boxy external hard drives. And oh my gosh, one of those dropped once and we lost half of our photos that were on it. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, we've had yeah multiple mishaps. So, so this is working pretty good. The trick is, which we're not the best at. The trick is to try and get the photos, videos off as soon as possible. Yeah. And is in the formats we want them and get them uploaded so that we have a backup of them. Yeah. That's really um, critical. It takes a lot of stamina to do that, I think. But, you know, it's something that we're working towards. Okay. So getting rid of stuff, figure out what we're going to bring, selling the house and the car and figure out else. the whole digital life, trying to figure out the digital life. That was, yeah, that was a lot. And then, uh, but we did it in three months. We got it all done in three months and it worked out pretty good. And I think we had a little bit more to do than a lot of other people might in, well, I think that they're in their own scenarios. Okay, so so that's one of the things that is interesting, right? 
we're doing it and we're turning 60. I just turned 60 a couple of days ago and Jim turned 60 in a few months. Um, so we've, we've lived a life and we've, we've done this for a long time, but we're retired. Is it good for retirees? I'm going to say yes. Oh yeah. I'm going to say yes. Um, I think the fact that you've lived in the same town or worked at a job for the last 30 years or whatever you did, don't let that stop you. Dreams are meant to be lived. Yeah. We only have one life and I don't think it matters when you start. Those kids that can do it, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they afford to do it. But the kids that can do it in their 20s and 30s, you know, all the power to you. But don't don't let age be a factor in not doing it. That's all I'm going to okay. say. You know, that's something else we should talk about. Should we talk about the money involved? I don't know. What how about the money? you need to be a digital nomad? Well, we can talk about that when we talk about how much it costs to live here in Vietnam. Oh, that's a good idea. But I guess where I would go with that in this episode is you don't need to be millionaires to go become oh, no. a digital nomad. We're not millionaires. No, we are definitely not. Our retirements are not very, yes, we are retired, but we're not like living large retirement, I guess. It's doable. If you've got any income at all, it's doable. If you don't have income, we'll talk about that a little bit in episode two as well. Um, what you could do. What you can do for work mm -hmm. as a digital nomad. As far as our podcasts and our websites and everything else, uh, we've been at that for long enough to where... We're making a little money. We're making enough money to, to do that and not have to pull that out of our own uh, income. So that's good. That helps us. Um, but you don't have to have, you don't have to be vloggers or bloggers or podcasters to be digital. No, in fact, we have a good friends that are a couple that they're just living off their retirement and they're living in cheap places. Yeah. They're living in Mexico. Then they'll go back and stay with family for a while. And then they'll go and they'll house sit in Europe. That's what they're doing right now. As a matter of fact, going to all the Christmas markets in Europe. For free, because basically they're staying with people and, that's and looking live. for cheap transportation. And since you don't have to um, have a time schedule, you know, you can go on those low seasons and you can take the repositioning cruises and you can do things that make life a little bit easier for you. So, yeah, it's there is a learning curve. I won't lie. Right. But there's plenty of help out there on the Internet. And it's so doable and it's such a great life. Yeah. Well, you know, living in Tacoma, even for the amount of time that we had, I, I could really feel us slipping into the whole, um, you know, it's Wednesday. I need to mow the lawn. It's Saturday. We should go do the shopping. It's every, everything was becoming a routine that was based around living in Tacoma as opposed to exploring the Northwest or, Yes, I agree. Those things that I we think love. we did. I mean, it was the COVID years, so that we get a little bit of a pass on that, right? But at the same token, we were becoming complacent. Yeah, it was just too easy to become complacent, and I, and and I think I had a little bit of depression. I think. I think so too. I think it just you know not getting out and not doing our normal exploration and finding things new and figuring out what to buy and where to buy it and where the market is and you know, how much is gas, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff you do on a basis, a daily basis when you're traveling, it was getting to me. It was really getting to me. Yeah. Yeah. So Just I think we're healthier. Routines. I think we're healthier in saying that we are officially digital nomads. Um, even though we have an apartment and we live in Vietnam Jim and I are planning on doing tons and tons of travel from here and just using this as a base. And um, we're going to be getting lots more content out there on a much more regular basis. So yeah. stay tuned. Yeah. And our next episode is going to be about how to become an expat in Vietnam and how to set up house. Yeah, we'll talk about the process that we went through and things that we've learned along the way. And we'll talk a little bit about the things that we don't know yet. Yeah, we're still discovering. Yeah. Okay. Until next time. All right. Thanks for listening to this episode of Streets and Eats. If you liked what you heard, please show us some love. Hit the like button and leave us a review. Maybe even subscribe so you don't miss any future podcasts. Also, we'd love it if you joined us on our Facebook private group, Streets and Eats, where we just have an ongoing conversation about all things travel. Ciao for now. <laughs>